Okay, so we're doing another Verdun weapon review, and this time we are doing the amazing Browning automatic rifle, or the 198, or the rifle caliber 30 automatic Browning M1918, or as originally known, the Browning machine rifle. Ah, the bar, the bar is just amazing, you know. Three Germans walk into a bar. The bar, it's the bar. <laughs> ah, the bar. Bar's a great gun, and a terrible gun at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, the bar was a, um, it says it's a light machine gun, but it wasn't really a light machine gun until the, uh, A2 variant. It was more of a, <laughs> it, it was a weird, had a really weird place in history in World War One. Um, going into World War One, the U.S.'s machine guns primarily consisted of a sho the Shoshat that were given to us by the French, and previously we had some Hotchkiss 9209s. These men were neither of them were very good. They were alright, but we really needed something better. And for World War One came out with the bar. John Browning. John Moses Browning. Another John Browning weapon. We have a lot of those. <laughs> Uh, John Browning designed this thing. It's yeah, it's, uh, it was originally designed for the concept of walking fire. Walking fire was a <laughs> terrible concept, but basically, you would hip fire. You would hold your gun at the hip, right? You hold it at the hip, and every fourth, and you would walk forward, and every fourth step, you would fire a burst of rounds. Fourth, you have to count like one, two, three, four. You're really gonna do that during battle. You're really gonna count out your footsteps while you're being shot at. That might work for police, not like duty, or you know, like riot control. But yeah, the, that was the bar. Fires thirty out six from open, open bolt, gas operated. It's been chambered in thirty out six, three or three British, eight millimeter Mauser. Yeah, six. 6.5 something or another metric crap. Um, yeah, it's been used by the U.S. from the from 1918 through the 1970s. Uh, f going through multiple iterations. Arguably, it got worse over time because the ne the World War One bar was actually pretty different than what you're used to in World War Two. It actually had um different sights. Didn't have a. It wasn't issued with a bipod in World War One. Um, yeah, but it was. It's a very heavy gun. Also, it's uh, twenty pounds, twenty four pounds, or tw fifteen pounds with the with the World War One version, twenty four pounds fully loaded in the World War Two version. They added nine pounds of weight. It f that that's just horrible. I mean that and um Carl of uh in range t v hates the World War two version it is pretty it is like the bipods crap the they changed the sights to crap and yeah there was it they some guy ruined it yeah after Browning's death because the a two variant came out came about in like the thirties John Browning died in the twenties yeah because he was old but um yeah the bar's been used in World War one very end of World War one uh, World War II, Second Sino-Japanese War, Chinese Civil War, Hu Hu Hukbalap, or whatever that is, Rebellion, the Korean War, Palestine Civil War, French Indochina War, Bay of Pigs Invasion, Vietnam War, Camb Cambodian Civil War, Turkish Invasion of Cyprus, thai Latoan Border War, and it's probably s some variants being used out there today. And nations it was used by, Argentina, Ar Austria. Austria, Belgium, Bolivia, Brazil, Cambodia, Canada, Chile, People's Republic of China, the Re Republic of China, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, Egypt, El Salvador, Ethiopia, Finland, France, Nazi Germany, West Germany, Greece, Haiti, Indonesia, Italy, Israel, South Korea, Laos, Liberia, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Pakistan, Panama, Philippines, Spanish Republic, the Spanish state, Poland, South Sudan, North Vietnam, South Vietnam, the Soviet Union, Sweden, Thailand, Turkey, United Kingdom, the United States, and Uruguay. Alright, <laughs> if it was a bad gun, you know, 
and that made countries want to use it. And there have been a lot of variants. But World War One. It, it was a primarily hip fire kind of weird. Like it was more of a battle rifle. I mean, a lot of people. <laughs> it's kind of assault an assault rifle in a way because it wasn't really a light machine gun since it wasn't issued with a bipod. It's it's a weird gun. In real life, it's a weird gun in history. Yeah, how about it? How is it in game? Well, it's either depending on the map, it's either really really good or really really bad, and you will hate it forever. On the close range map that you're seeing, I forget that one. I think it's Champagne or Champagna or something, but um, <laughs> it's really good because you just hip fire it and you spray everywhere at close range, and uh, you get a lot of kills sometimes. <laughs> I entered this game late with the b and I was using the bar and I managed and you'll see at the end I managed to come up with I believe the highest score in the game or the second highest and I entered this match pretty late. I mean and but yeah the bar in game is pretty oh one thing I forgot to mention there was also another version called the Colt Monitor which was a v extremely lightened version of the bar. So yeah, back back to it again. As you can see, the iron sights are the World War One one with the uh, the ghost ring sights, which in real life make the bar really really good. In video games, this in Verdun, you can see the iron sights doing in this version take up about seventy percent of the screen. And they also and to balance it, they also gave it tons of recoil. Which, you know, a 15 pound gun really shouldn't have recoil, you know? I mean, yeah, it's firing 30 out 6, but the bar has very little recoil because of its shape and how heavy it is. Which is really interesting, you know? It's like. crazy. Oh, um. I forgot to mention, Ohio Ordnance Works makes a modern version of the bar called the H Car, which is actually in Battlefield Hardline. Not a lot of people play Battlefield Hardline, I guess they just don't like it or something. I watched some videos, I don't think it looks that bad. But, um, yeah, it's pretty good in Verdun. There's 20 round magazines. It loads pretty slow, as most guns do in Verdun. Uh, it's a two hit kill, so one shot headshot. So, generally speaking, if you hit every shot, you could get 10 kills per mag. Which <laughs> is kind of funny, because 20 shots, that's actually the same amount of kills as the Lee Enfield. Unless you get all headshots and you get 20, then you have the same kill ratio as the um, uh, trench mag of air. 98. Um, but yeah, it's like, uh, on close range maps like this, or if you can get in close range, it's really good because it's basically sort of an assault rifle sort of thing. On longer range maps, it's terrible because it's not a light machine gun. It's it's just not a light machine. You can't deploy it. You can't use it for long range. You know, it's... I mean, you probably could try to single shot it, but... I would never recommend that. Because um, it has so much recoil. You know, if you're good... If, I believe this, the gunner class, or whatever it's called in here, has a... Um, you can also switch to the Hotchkiss. For, and that's more your long range open stuff. But on this map... And Fort Dumont. I'm guessing Fort Dumont will also be a pretty good map for this, even though I hate Fort Dumont. Um, yeah, the bar can do very well. <laughs> yeah, it's just... It's the bar. <laughs> kind of a... It's got a crazy following, yeah, because it's John Browning, and it's really shares the same place in history. I think it just shares the same place in history as the Fedorov, personally, because the bar wasn't really a light machine gun in World War One. It was a machine rifle. I don't know what that really says about it, but yeah, it's um. It's, I wonder how it's gonna be in Battlefield One, because I watched Battlefield One gameplay and uh, not I'm not too crazy about the Conquest game mode. I want to like Conquest is Conquest. It, the Conquest has literally been the same in every Battlefield, and you know to change that to a World War One setting, it it kind of just looked like. I know that a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this. Battlefield 4 with World War 1 weapons. That's kind of what it seemed like. I mean, with more destruction. So, I'm kind of waiting for Battlefield 1 to, have to see the operations game mode. I really want to see that and play in hardcore. But yeah, I wonder how the bar is going to be in Battlefield 1. Because it's basically a scar each, in a way. 
in in hardcore the scar h is amazing plus you know people are gonna be like you don't really have a counter for the bar it's like from what I've seen, the only machine guns I've seen so far are the Lewis gun, the Madsen, and the Bernay Mercy 1909. So I'm wondering, which how is the bar going to operate in Battlefield 1? Uh, I wonder if they're going to give it a bipod anyway. Which is, uh, they're probably going to give it a bipod anyway. They, I don't think you should be allowed to equip a bipod to it. I think it should, yeah, I, I, I think, like, if they're going to stay true to something, like, the weapons aren't very staying true because they have a lot of optics and s attachments they never had, like, um, like, the, so a lot of the semi-automatics can go fully automatic for no reason, basically the medic class is just assault from Battlefield 4, but yeah, I have a lot, I have, I like, it's gonna be buying Battlefield One, but I have a lot of problems with it. But yeah, um, so Redone's also coming to consoles, which is gonna be great. Don't not sure if I'm gonna buy it for consoles or not. I think I might because it's probably only gonna be like twenty bucks. I'll support them for twenty bucks, give them money. You know, I think if you have the if you have a console and you have a P and you already have it for a PC, you should give them money because they the devs of Verdun are amazing. How they just like the board came out in a free. And the bar came out in a free update. Like a big free update. 40 new weapons or so. Yeah, we got this map and... Yeah. But I'm gonna end it here. Bar is... <laughs> really touchy. You either have a really good game with it or a really bad game. So yeah. That's that's basically the bar. Bye. Oh, I don't really have a video to link to. Like I would link to, you know, like Forgotten Weapons or... C and Ars... I would mainly link to C and Arsenal probably. C and, Ar C and Arsenal probably... But yeah, bye.